Hello everyone, welcome to From the Star Wars Library, where Star Wars is in print, the Force is with the readers, and well, this is another of those supplemental episodes. This time, taking a look at a type of Star Wars publishing, or a line of Star Wars publishing, that I've been asked about quite a bit since this series started. I've had people asking me, what about the stories from the Marvel UK materials? The United Kingdom, Britain, right? You look like Harry Potter, why aren't you going over the stuff in the UK materials? Well. This is the episode you've been waiting for, a primer on the UK stuff. Now, the UK stuff from Marvel tended to be released in one of two formats, weekly or monthly. Now, the weekly stuff tended to be essentially half a story at a time, most of the time. So you might have one issue of the American series, and they would reprint it in the UK, but they'd split it in half, and one week you get the first half, the next week you get the second half. There were also some issues that were released monthly at different times in the Marvel UK run, and the monthly stuff tended to be one full American issue being reprinted in the UK without having to be split into pieces here. The series also tended to change its name, which can sometimes make this somewhat confusing when we're taking a look at the Marvel UK series. The series started out as Star Wars Weekly, and that ran all the way up to issue 117, and then issue 118 was renamed the Empire Strikes Back weekly. That kept going until issue 140, and in 140 they went to a monthly instead of weekly format and renamed it The Empire Strikes Back monthly. Then, starting at issue 159, they stepped away from The Empire Strikes Back and just renamed it Star Wars monthly. And it was under that name, that new moniker, that the series ended, sort of, with issue number 171. The series was then relaunched with a new name, Restarted numbering, so we're back to number one, and a return to weekly releases with Return of the Jedi Weekly, which ran for 155 issues. The series also released a grand total of seven different annuals. They also released six specials, two in 1983, three in 1984, and one in 1985. So in this Marvel UK series, which is actually more like a magazine, it kind of reminded me more of the format of something like Clone Wars magazine right now, where you've got a magazine with a lot of other information, interviews and whatnot, and then the comics inserted into it. Heck, sometimes the ones over in Marvel UK for this run of Star Wars would include stories that were from Marvel but weren't even Star Wars stories, just kind of tossed in there. But in this particular series, they wound up reprinting pretty much all of the American Marvel series. Now, that also includes material that was originally presented in the pages of Pizzazz, or excuse me, it's been a while since I did those episodes, Pizzazz, there you go, uh, starting with, of course, the Keeper's World, from the first nine issues of Pizzazz, which was reprinted in the UK, we can now get that in the form of Star Wars number zero from Dark Horse Comics, we've looked at that story before. They also wound up reprinting the Kingdom of Ice storyline, and that was in a unique situation. And then what they had was a story that was released in the last chunk of Pizzazz before Pizzazz died, leaving one part of the story untold in the U.S. In the U.K., they reprinted all the stuff that had been printed in Pizzazz in the U.S. and then added in the last chunk, a part entitled Pursuit. In the United States, that would wind up being reprinted later as War on Ice as the fourth story in... Marvel Illustrated Books, Star Wars, number one. We've also covered that story in the past here because it did start out as an American publication. It's just that in that story's case, the last part of the story did see print first in the UK. The rest of it, though, did start first in the United States. Now, Marvel UK also, from time to time, ran some original stories, though really not all that many. For all the hubbub that's made about the Marvel UK stuff, there really isn't a lot of original tales from that run. Now, the original stories from the Star Wars Weekly era, that first era of the Marvel UK publication, were Way of the Wookiee, The Day After the Death Star, The Weapons Master, and World of Fire. The three first ones that I mentioned there, Day After the Death Star, Way of the Wookiee, and The Weapons Master, were the other three stories reprinted in the U.S. in Marvel Illustrated Books Star Wars Number 1. So these have all been covered here on the show. Also, World of Fire, as you'll see here in the series as well, got its own reprinting in the United States as Marvel Illustrated Book Star Wars number two. The only two that were ever produced in this line. A lot of times they saw books that were reprinted about this size that were just adaptations of the films. Now the short time period whenever it was switched over to The Empire Strikes Back weekly didn't have any 
original stories whatsoever. Then it was renamed and rescheduled as The Empire Strikes Back Monthly, and that featured the original stories Death Mask, The Pandora Effect, Dark Knight's Devilry, Talatni Throws a Shape, Dark Lord's Conscience, Rust Never Sleeps, and The Flight of the Falcon, before the series was then renamed again as Star Wars Monthly, which began with a new original tale called Blind Fury. Now, all those stories were all reprinted in the United States in the pages of Classic Star Wars Devil Worlds number one or Classic Star Wars Devil Worlds number two, except for Death Mask. Now, Death Mask never got reprinted in the United States, at least not up to the time of this recording. What we'll find, though, is that upcoming in 2013, we have a new omnibus called Wild Space Volume 1. Wild Space Volume 1 is slated to include Death Mask, all the stuff from Devil Worlds, which has never gotten its own trade paperback in the past, the stuff from the Keeper's World, we'll see World of Fire, we'll see the other ones from Marvel Illustrated Books number one, so you will get a chance to check those out in the near future. As for Return of the Jedi Weekly, well, it ended its run without adding any new Star Wars tales to the saga. Lastly, I would be remiss if I did not mention, for Luke Van Horn out there, who helps me out so much on the Star Wars Timeline Gold, that there is another pair of stories that can be found in the Marvel UK run that has not been reprinted in the United States. They're entitled R2-D2's Tales from the Data Banks. And these appeared in the Return of the Jedi Weekly number 83 and in the pages of a Star Wars special, both from 1985. Now, these stories have R2-D2 in them, but only briefly. He's sort of the uh, Tales from the Crypt, Crypt Keeper-style storyteller of stories but the stories are all ones from our universe. They're sci-fi tales set in our universe uh, by Stan Lee. And, you know, one example, I went through and uh, just printed this out from a scan of it that I have. Uh, r 2 Tales from the Data Banks. What really is a human being? I had to learn the answer. And I did learn part of the answer the hard way. Script by Stan Lee, art by Steve Ditko, lettering by Art Sinek. I mean, these are some big names in comics, but... This has nothing to do with the Star Wars universe whatsoever, except for it being R2-D2, in theory, who is the Crypt Keeper, telling you these stories. We'd almost expect him to be back going, <laughs> or what would be the Star Wars uh, equivalent? Uh, or something in the background uh, uh, as the, the door closes and we get the cool music as we fade away. Do you iris out to something like this, or do you close the, the Crypt door? Suffice to say, I'll be covering these materials, including these. Uh, that have not been covered yet whenever I get done with the main American Marvel run here on From the Star Wars Library, but I did want to take the time to mention it here for those who have been wondering about the Marvel UK stuff and where you can find it. Yes, the vast majority, it will be reprinted in Wild Space Volume 1, as was promised by Dark Horse when they first started reprinting the Marvel stuff. They said they'd give us Marvel UK, and they're going to. Not so sure about... Uh r 2 d Tales from the Data Banks, though. Uh, no word yet on if they plan to reprint this at some point. And frankly, not really all that excited to see it, so it can wait. It's okay. So, I hope this has been somewhat illustrative of the Marvel UK stuff for those of you who are not as well-versed in it. I myself was not particularly well-versed in it until I really started researching it in depth. So, uh, thank you for watching, and as always, may the Force be with the readers.